We have a pretty good sense that mind and matter really do interact based on laboratory studies. The studies follow a general principle, which is that you give somebody an instruction to mentally try to influence a system at a distance. So the, the systems that have been used as targets have been both living systems and non-living. On the non-living side, everything from uh, tossing a die to flipping a coin, this is like from 50 to 100 years ago they used to do that, uh, to uh, crystallizing substances and seeing whether they look different if you're thinking about them versus not including things like water and copper sulfate and other solutions. Uh, it includes uh, the movement of bubbles in water, and the height of fountains, uh, the movement of uh, electronic random number generators when they're attached to little creatures that can wander around, the actual bits, the random bits that these generators uh, produce. And in my own work, and for the last uh, seven or eight years involving optical physics, where we're taking very classical physics problems and putting them into the laboratory and seeing whether or not the mind can interact with things like the double slit interference pattern. So this is Physics 101 on quantum mechanics. And it's a way of showing that photons behave like a wave or like a particle depending on how you look at it. So we simply ask the question that if looking at something is the same as observing it, can you ask somebody to observe with their mind? And if it turns out that you can observe with your mind and cause a photon to change its behavior, it, it tells us two things. One, it says that there really is some aspect of the mind that is extended. You can see at a distance. And it also suggests that an outstanding problem in physics, namely the quantum measurement problem, which is specifically focused on this notion that at the quantum level, if you observe a system, it changes its behavior, almost as though it knows that you're looking. Well, it says there actually is something about consciousness that is relevant to that question. So, in one stroke, we're able to show both a mind-matter interaction and also inform an outstanding problem in physics, uh, which is very important because the ontology of what quantum mechanics is telling us is not resolved at all. What we see are probabilistic states, and it gives rise to ideas of multi-worlds, and multiple dimensions and at least a dozen different interpretations. In each case, you can study to see whether or not the interpretation is correct, except that many of them would give basically the same result, except for the studies that we're doing, because we're saying the mind actually does have a role to play in the way that the quantum world works. And since everything is sitting on the quantum world in physics terms, then it probably has a role in the macroscopic world we live in as well. So from the quantum level to the macroscopic physical level, we do see changes as a result of the mind, and we see it in living systems as well. So across the board, we find mind and matter are related in some important way.